looking at is psychological barriers that students may face, certain groups of students may face when they come into the learning environment. Now we have 25 years of really good research on how these psychological threats or barriers function in face-to-face -face environments. Most famously, social identity threat, which um, most of the research, uh, which is essentially a fear of being able to perform as well as others based just on your group identity. So the most uh, research has been on females in STEM courses and African American students feeling some sense of threat based on just their people group. Be mindful of the different cues that might communicate um, whether someone belonged in an environment. So everything from the image used on the course registration page or some of the first images that they see. Do they see people like them in that image? Or is it reinforced maybe the, the sense that, oh, I don't belong here because I'm not a, you know, for instance, uh, you know, in a CS course, I'm not a techie coder like those people. So think about the image, think about the text that, you know, that first experience, is this course for me? Is there a statement, for instance, about diversity and inclusion? So that would be the first thing. And there's lots of other cues in the environment that we that you could look at to say, you know, if I came into this environment as, as a female in a STEM course, would I feel like I belong here? So the second thing that, that we would talk about is just different brief interventions, we call them interventions, they're just activities, right, that can be done to help forestall those feelings of non-belonging or forestall those feelings of psychological threat. So we call it a value relevance affirmation activity. Um, really simple to do, you can implement it with, you know, we use a Qualtrics survey where uh, it's each individual student just goes through it less than five minutes. They pick a number of values that are most important to them. Then they write about how taking this course will reinforce those values. And that has been shown to, you know, really persist over, uh, over an entire course to help someone feel like they can engage. So the third thing is just, thinking about once someone gets into a course, all of the other cues that might be uh, involved. So representation in the videos. Are they seeing just, for instance, you know, a, a white male the entire time? Now we know putting in a, a female co-instructor um, can be, uh, again, a, a, a helpful way to help um, people feel like they can belong. Using uh, past peers in a course to, uh, to appear in, in certain videos or to sort of articulate why it was important to them um, or even to normalize the experience to saying, especially if you, you have a minority student that can talk about this to say, you know, at the, at the beginning, I felt like I you know, didn't belong, but um, you know, after engaging in things, I, I was successful. And, and we know that those sort of peer stories can be really, uh, really powerful. How can we boost a level of connection to the course right away? A connection to the course and connection to other students. And we know there, there's social psychological research, again, called mere belonging, that really, really basic um, senses of connection to others can boost motivation. So, you know, one of, an example is just knowing that you have a birth date with someone else in the course, the same birth date lo and behold, boosts your motivation, your persistence, and actually your performance. Now, we wouldn't do that, you know, maybe that's one way, but other ways, those intro activities of finding someone else in the course that maybe has common interests or common goals in responding to them. Again, very brief activities, but those, uh, those uh, patterns of thought and perception create a virtuous cycle over the, over the course. Mm -hmm.